Texas and Mexico share over 1,200 miles of common border and are joined by 28 international bridges and border crossings that allow commercial, vehicular, and pedestrian traffic. The border crossings are vital to the economies of Texas and Mexico. But these border crossings are also vital to the illegal drug trade. According to the Cato Institute, over 90% of fentanyl seizures occur at legal crossing points or interior vehicle checkpoints, not on illegal migration routes. In 2021, 86% of convicted fentanyl drug traffickers were American citizens, which is 10 times higher than the number of illegal immigrants convicted for the same offense. In fact, only a small fraction of 1% of the people arrested by Border Patrol for crossing illegally possessed any fentanyl at all. We traveled to the Texas-Mexico border to find out more about how major of a problem fentanyl is here, so close to the source. There's thriving communities on both sides, and commerce across the border happens every day. Many Americans who live in these areas regularly cross the border for shopping, dining, even medical and dental care. The cost of a root canal in the U.S. averages between $800 and $1,200. Across the border in Mexico, a root canal can cost less than $300. People also come here for pharmaceuticals. Prescription drugs can be much cheaper in Mexico, and a prescription isn't required as long as the drug isn't on the list of controlled medications. And according to reports, some pharmacies will sell drugs that are on the list of controlled medications without requiring a prescription. We worked with two Spanish-speaking Americans posing as shoppers to find out more. Our shoppers parked on the U.S. side of the border and walked across to Mexico. Almost immediately, they were approached by someone promoting pharmaceuticals available at the pharmacy he represented. During the trip, the shoppers tried buying individual Percocet pills at four pharmacies. The clerk at one pharmacy told the shoppers they don't have any that they were removed because they were too strong. Oh, no <laughs> At another pharmacy, the clerk told our shoppers that they have Percocet, but that it is only available in sealed containers, not individually. The clerk then suggested cheaper pain medications as an alternative. During the conversation, our shoppers saw another person behind the counter unpacking boxes of different medications from a large black trash bag. At another pharmacy, one of the shoppers asked for Percocet pills and the clerk offered a sealed container. When the shopper asked to buy individual pills, the clerk said no, then warned the shoppers against buying individual pills and said that some pharmacies will sell medication in a bottle labeled Percocet filled with pills that are not Percocet. The clerk then reiterated to the shoppers to be careful, and if they buy, to make sure the container is sealed. One pharmacy was willing to sell pills individually. One of the shoppers asked to see a Vicodin and a Percocet. The clerk retrieved one pill from a container with no visible label and the other pill came from a container labeled Percocet, by hand. During the conversation, the shoppers saw a man enter the pharmacy and deliver a gallon-sized clear plastic bag full of yellow pills that resembled the Percocet the clerk was showing the shoppers. The shoppers purchased the two pills and left.
At a secure location, we tested the pills for fentanyl using fentanyl test strips, which are available on Amazon, but illegal in some states. We tested the Vicodin first. The process requires crushing the pill into a powder. Dissolving the powder in water. Submerging one end of the test strip in the solution for 15 seconds. And waiting for the results. Two lines on the test strip indicate negative. One indicates positive. The results were negative. Then we tested the pill labeled Percocet using the same process. The pill sold to our shoppers as a Percocet tested positive for fentanyl. We repeated the process a second time to confirm the results. It was just that simple. One trip across the border by two Americans on foot. One purchase and we found fentanyl. The city in Mexico where we purchased the pills doesn't matter. The same could happen in any border town or tourist destination in Mexico. A study conducted by UCLA, independently corroborated by a Los Angeles Times investigation, found that 11 out of 40 pharmacies in four cities in northern Mexico sold counterfeit pills containing fentanyl, heroin, or methamphetamine or a combination. According to the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, it is impossible to distinguish between real and counterfeit pills without testing them. The only way to avoid this risk is not to buy.